learners welcome back today we will discuss about the remaining part of your unit 1 from the course 2 that is psychological foundation of education so we have discussed about the concept of psychology and the different branches of psychology in the earlier discussion now in this discussion we will discuss about the concept of educational psychology in detail and the scope of educational psychology and different methods of educational psychology. So let's start. So as we have discussed in the earlier discussion that educational psychology is the branch of that psychology which studies about or which deals with the application of the psychological principle in the teaching learning behavior. So, we can say that it is a branch of psychology who studies the behavior of the individual in learning situation and its varied problem. There are lots of definitions regarding educational psychology. We have, uh, we have mentioned here two important definitions by two important psychologists. One is Keener who have defined that educational psychology is that branch of psychology which deals with teaching and learning. So basically he had also concentrated on the main or important uh, concept of psychology of applicating or application of the psychological principle in the teaching learning situation. Then another important definition was given by Crow and Crow. He has said that educational psychology describes and explains the learning experiences of an individual from birth through old age. Means uh, we know that we are learning all the time. It is not like that at a particular time our learning is stopped. We can learn every time from every point of view, from every experiences. So educational psychology as defined by Crow and Crow is described and explains the learning experiences of an individual from the bar through the old age. Means till he died, he can experience his learning and these experiences are the explanation about his educational psychology. Then it is concerned with the development, evaluation and application of the theories and principles of human learning and instruction. Yes, educational psychology is not only about the application of the theories, it also deals with the development and evaluation of the human learning and instruction. Through this, through this particular subset, we can have lots of learning theories, learning instruction which can be applied in the classroom situation. Then the principles, laws and theories of psychology are applied in education situation by educational psychology. Yes, applied psychology given give us lots of theories and it can be applied in the practical educational situation which also which can which can define the education in a terms of psychology or it can define the student behavior. Then it studies the educational problem with reference to the psychological fact. Yes, in the classroom or in the educational situation, the student, the teacher face lots of problem and this can be tackled, this can be uh, solved on the basis of or with the reference of the different psychological fact. Next, we have to discuss about the scope of educational psychology. The first of all, I want to say that the scope of educational psychology is very, very wide because it is a branch of psychology which covers the whole educational sector and education is the part and parcel of human life which cannot be confined to a particular limit. So the scope of educational psychology is very wide. So the first scope or the area of study of educational psychology is growth and development of the human child. As we have discussed in the earlier discussion about the different subcategories under pure and applied psychology, we have come across the world a developmental psychology and it I have already mentioned you that it studies about the different senses that occur in the behavior of an individual through different stages of human life. 
from prenatal development to the adulthood so if a person or a an individual come across different stages of human life and in this stages he faces lots of changes and lots of the lots of development occurs in him in him or her so educational psychology discusses studies about the growth and development of human child here i want to mention here that growth and development are not the same growth implies the growth implies the quantitative aspect of human human and human development and development is a broad term and it implies the quantitative as well as qualitative development of an, of an individual from his conception till birth so the area of study under this scope is very wide and educational psychology studies about this growth and development of individual from his the time of the conception of it of factors in mother's own till the time of date then study of human behavior yeah most important thing and psychology itself is a study of behavior so uh, this is the means human behavior is the most important area of study under educational psychology scope it studies about human behavior the behavior the human behavior may be normal abnormal in any situation it studies about the behavior of the human then another important scope or study area of psychology educational psychology is individual differences we know that no two child are alike even between twin we find differences they may not be equally equal in terms of physical mental social emotional development so individual differences are a natural phenomenon in in a classroom in a family or in a society we face we meet lots of people but all the people are not the same one differs from other so educational psychology studies about how individual differ and what are the differences between and among the people in the classroom in the society or in the family this how these differences are occurred and what are the causes and for these differences how they how they are behaving all these are studies studied by educational psychology then another important area of study under the scope of educational psychology is measurement and evaluation yes of course in the field of education besides teaching learning evaluation is the most important aspect because without evaluation the teaching learning will not be fruitful whatever we have taught whatever the learner have learned or they have gained this must be evaluated because without evaluation both the teaching learning will be meaningless so educational psychology studies about different methods and ways of measuring and evaluating the if evaluating this teaching teaching and the la- amount of learning by the learner moreover it uh, it tries to find out it it tries to study about different methods of measuring human behavior in terms of attitude aptitude intelligence uh, lots of lots of mental traits that a human possesses then another important area of study under this educational psychology is personality and adjustment yes this, this is the most important concept under the study of psychology or educational psychology what we hear how, how we behave in the in the, in the society or among uh, at the uh, in front of others that is our personality it is nothing but the whole of an individual personality so we this branch of psychology studies about the personality of the individual and how they make adjustment because in 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 our life we face lots of situation it may be good it may be it may be bad but we have to make adjustment how people make adjust and what are the different method through which we can we can avoid the mal adjustment all these are discussed under the scope of educational psychology
Another most important scope of educational psychology is mental health and hygiene. Yes, nowadays we are more concerned about mental health. Yes, because without a proper mental health, we cannot maintain a proper physical health because both are interrelated. So, there are lots of causes of mental illness and how it can be boosted out, how, how we can maintain a good hygiene, proper hygiene is very important. And to help our children to learn effectively, to make our teaching learning process effective, meaningful, we must maintain a good mental health on the part of both teacher and the student. So these are studied under the scope of educational psychology. Then another important scope under this branch of psychology is exceptionalities. Yes, we know that. We have discussed about the individual differences. No individual are same. Means two individuals are not same. In our society, in our family, or in our surrounding, we've, we have witnessed some of the children who are not normal, who behave in an un or a unaccepted way, or they behave, they don't behave like the normal child. So there are some children who are who, who who do not possess the same mental and physical uh, physical ability to behave or to adjust in a society like the normal peers so they they are known as special child and they they are they are called special child because their needs are special they cannot adjust in the general classroom because their needs are not like the other children so they are known as special child. There are lots of types, subcategories of this special child or exceptionalities, and these are this. This it will be discussed in an another important topic under this paper or course. So educational psychology studies about these types, and they find out the causes of this exceptionality and how they can be helped out. Then another most important topic or scope under this educational psychology is guidance and counseling. Yes, we have to teach our child, we have to guide our child. A teacher's duty is not only to teach in the classroom, his duty is also to guide and direct the child so that he can choose the right path. So, guidance and counseling is the most important part of educational system. The educational institution must make provision of guidance and counseling because the child may face lots of mental, physical, emotional crisis or problem. So they have to be, they must be helped. They must need help or they need help. So for this, we have to make provision and guidance and counseling will help the child to solve their problem and they will be able to find out the ways through which they can be tackled out. So these are the scope under the educational psychology. Now we will discuss about the methods of educational psychology. As we have discussed that psychology or educational psychology is the branch of psychology which studies about or which deal with the application of psychological principles and theory in the teaching learning situation. So how the behavior of the child are made? how the behavior of the children or the student are made. So, so there are some there are some important methods through which psychologists or the person who are engaged in studying behavior make apply make application of this method to study the behavior. First one is introspection method. Second one is observation method. Third is experimental and fourth one is case study. So first one is introspection. The name itself give us the meaning. It is the combination of two words intro and aspection. Intro means within and aspection means looking. So from the on the basis of this combination of these two words, we can say that introspection is a method of looking within. Means when we look within, when you look within, you are doing introspection. Suppose I am thinking what I am doing, what I am thinking, what, what, how I am behaving. 
So it implies what? Self-observation. When we observe our mental state by ourselves, it is known as introspection. And it is the oldest method of educational psychology. We all can apply this method of educational psychology to know about our behavior, to know about the mental, to know about our mental state. Then, sec and there are some steps of this uh, introspection method. First one is self-consciousness. Yes, to introspect, first of all, we have to be self-conscious. It is not like that we are not, we are not in a position of consciousness and we can make introspection. No, for introspection, we have to be conscious. So the first step is self-consciousness. Second one is reflection and deliberation. We have to reflect on our mental state. And last one is drawing conclusion. On the basis of the deliberation and reflection, we can find out what we are doing, what we are thinking, and how we are behaving. So this is the oldest method of educational psychology. Next one is observation method. This is the most important and widely used method of educational psychology. We uh, know means uh, more or less we all are engaged or we all are applying this method of educational psychology. We are, we are observing people. When we observe other people, when we observe other behavior, it is comes under the method of observation method. It deals with the overt behavior of an individual. In the introspection method, we deal with the inner behavior of the individual. But when we are dealing with the observation method, we are dealing with the overt behavior of an individual. So it is known as measurement without instrument. We don't need any measurement to observe or to study the behavior of other. There are some steps. Planning, first we have to plan when and where we will observe. Then execution, the proper execution means actually doing the job. Then recording, we have to record what we have observed, what we have uh, observed about the particular person and then interpretation. Suppose we can observe a style in a playground. So first of all, we have to make a plan that, that today he, he will play at this time and we have to we have to execute means we have to observe them. Then we have to record what he is doing, how he is behaving, and we have to interpret. Yes, he is in a he is in a good mental state, or vice versa. We can do it. So the, the, again, there are some types of observation. First one is participant observation. We can take part in the particular play that the particular subject is doing. And then it will be known as participant observation. Means we can observe another person with by being with them. Being with them. But he 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 may not he may not he must not know it. He may not know it, but we we are observing him or her being with them. Being with him or her. Then non-participant. He he doesn't know that I am with the, I am observing him. So Without being with him or her, I can or we can observe other. It is called non-participant. Means we are observing from, from backward or from, the, or from another point of view. Then non-control observation. We can, we can observe a particular person in anywhere. Means in the, in the classroom, in the playground, in the singing stage, in anywhere which, which is not controlled. Then sometimes we can observe some behavior, some subject in a particular situation which is controlled means the, part, the person knows that he is being observed. That is called control observation. So these are about the two important methods of observation and introspection. Next we have experimental method. This is the most important method and widely used by the social scholars experimenter to know about the behavior of other. So it is the method through which the subject can be brought into the laboratory and studied under control condition. As the name itself is experimental, so experiment is done to know about the behavior of the particular subject. 
It may be in a laboratory or in another control environment. It is a method to obtain dependable way. And I want to mention here that the first psychological laboratory was established in Leipzig in the year 1879 by Und. Since then, this method became popular. It is an observation under pre-arranged condition. Requirement for this method are laboratory, apparatus, equipment, subject mean the particular person, experimenter, problem mean we must have a problem, otherwise experiment will, will not have any meaning. Then hypothesis and design. Two variables are present in this method, independent, that operates within a person and dependent, that is the output. And there, like the other earlier method, this in this method too, we have to follow some step. First one is statement of the problem. First, we have to know the problem. Then we have to, we, we must need some hypothesis formulation. We have to do some guesses. Then we have to identify the variable that I have already mentioned. There are two, two kinds of variable, dependent variable and independent variable. Then creation of control situation as it is done on the laboratory in the laboratory. So we have to create a control situation. Then we have to analyze the behavior and then we have to test the hypothesis on the result of obtained data. In the in this course you will you will come across some 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 experiment that are done by some some the famous psychologists on some animals and those are those are conducted under this particular situation or particular method of experimental method. Then a method of experimentation may have two three kind of method. One is one group method, parallel group method, or rotation group method. Means in one group the experiment can be done. On two sep two parallel group it can be done. On on a on a rotation basis it can be done. Then we have the case study method, the last method. Case study, as we know that it is a study of the individual case, and it is basically used for studying a problem child. As we as we have discussed uh, under the scope of this educational psychology, that there are some child. They are known as special cell. They have some special problem. They have some special needs. So their problem, their needs can be studied under this, under the, this method through applying some, applying different kind of record like cumulative record, which are, which are, which are very important to maintain the case or to know about the case. There are some case steps like uh, in this method also. First one is determination of the status under investigation. First of all, we have to know the status of the case. What is going on? What is the problem under this investigation? Then determination of the probable anecdotes means what can be the probable causes? Why the child is behaving like this? This is very important to determine. Then next one is formulation of hypothesis, means some reasonable guesses and testing the hypothesis. So case study is the most important and widely accepted method of educational psychology and it is also applied and used by the research scholars, the, 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 the researchers to know about the different kind of uh, behavior of a particular person or a unit. There are, there are some other methods which can be also applied in the uh, educational psychology that are differential method which studies about the individual differences, that clinical method which studies about the different problem in a clinical situation and the last one is psychophysical method which studies about the relationship between the psychological and physical aspect of a particular person. So, in this discussion, we have discussed about mainly the concept of educational psychology, different scopes or area of study under educational psychology and the methods of educational psychology. So I think you have come, you have understood about this uh, particular unit and uh, I hope to meet you in the next, next uh, video with a new topic, with a new course. Till then, thank you.